Hello and welcome to Blue Army TV. I'm sitting up to Carl. I've lost one nil away from home to Gillingham. Um, <coughs> well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm not feeling great, so if I start coughing up a lung, you're going to have to excuse me on that. Uh, and look, it follows the pattern of of something I've noticed. Um, whenever I am ill, Carl, I'll play awfully, and that's certainly what happened today. Um, look, we for the top goal scorers in the league, y you wouldn't think so. Looking at us. <coughs> you know, we're, we are the top goal scorers in the league, but we haven't been able to score a goal in three games, and it's getting a bit worrying, to be honest. And in all three of those games, we've started a different... I say strike partnership. He decided to switch it up and start a front three today, which was never, ever... You, you know, it's not going to work at this point in the season. And and, and it's, it's, look, over the past few seasons, <coughs> I've always thought that... um you need a settled 11 to get anywhere in the league. Um, and Paul Simpson's kind of disproved that a little bit because he, he does like to switch up his strike partnerships. You know, And they're all good strikers, in my opinion. Uh, look, I, I know they haven't been playing well recently. I, I saw a stat where it was like, over the last 10 games, I think our strikers have only scored like two or three goals between them. And, and that's quite embarrassing. <coughs> we're getting all our goals from, um, from the midfield and the defence. And now that they're not scoring, we're not getting any goals at all. But look, that was one of the worst performances of the season today, and 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 it, and it really, really was. I haven't seen us play that badly in a long time. And and, and look, the Stevenage nil nil. I think you can understand it to a degree. <coughs> I think look, it, it, it's a decent point against a team that's up there with you. It disappointed me in that game that we didn't go for the win towards the end. But you can understand going for a nil nil against a team like Stevenage because they're so good. And then it comes to Bradford, and they're in they're in good form as well. But again, towards the end of the game, it looks like we're hanging on for a point. And that's what I don't like about the, the last four games even. I know we won at Swindon, but it was only because of a bad defensive error that won us a corner in the last minute that got us that win. Like, I don't think we were going for the win in, in any of our last four. I think we've wanted a point come the end of the game. <coughs> in all four of those games, it's felt like in the last 10-15 minutes, we've accepted a point. And, and, and a team in this position in the league... You can't be doing that for four games in a row. You can't be accepting a, a point. And we tried to do that again today, and we didn't even get the point. And look, Gillingham are in good form at the minute. They really are. Um, I, I was on uh, Jill's in the Blood, a, a brilliant YouTube channel, uh, doing a preview show there. And there was an amazing stat that Carlisle and Gillingham are in exactly the same form. Over the last ten games before this game, um, we've both played the same ten teams. We've both won the same amount of games, drawn the same amount of games, lost the same amount of games. <coughs> with the exact same goal difference. Look, that that a draw would have been nice to just to carry that stat on, but look, against Gillingham, they are in the, where they are in the league for a reason. Like, they're in good form at the minute. <coughs> but before this game, look, we were in brilliant form and we've been in good form all season. Why, at the end of that game, are we playing against a team who are well into the bottom half of the table and we're not trying to get all three points? Like, <coughs> the last 20 minutes of that game, we were hanging on. We weren't going for the win. We were happy with a point. And a point wouldn't have been good enough. And no points is definitely not good enough. Like, it really isn't good enough. Um, f For the table, we've dropped out of the top three. Again. Um, <coughs> which is very frustrating. And we've also let teams below us catch up to us a bit. Stockport and, and Bradford are, are slowly climbing their way up towards us. And I said there was a gap, but, you know lose next week and the teams below us win, that four-point gap suddenly turns into zero points or five points or whatever it was before this game. Um, and look, it's a very difficult game next week. I'm, I'm going down there. I'm, I'm going down to uh, to Leighton Orient. <coughs> it's the furthest away game I've ever been to, but... oh Well, I haven't been to it yet, but it's the furthest, you know what I mean? It's, it's the furthest I will have gone to, gone to afterwards. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a tough one, but it would just be Carlisle to lose to Gillingham and then... <coughs> And then stick four past Leighton Orient. Like Leighton Orient, they are where they are in the league for a reason. I feel like I say that a lot, but come this time of the season, teams are where they are in the league for a good, good reason. And Leighton Orient are top because they've been the best team over this season. But as we've seen this week with Gillingham, form means something. And Leighton Orient, they're not in bad form, but they're not in the excellent form that they were in to get to the point where they are at the top of the league. You know, weirdly, I'd much rather play Leighton Orient than I would Stevenage at the minute. Or maybe even Northampton. I think Northampton, they've had a very, very good f fixture list. Um, <coughs> they don't from this point forward. But up until, like, the last 
six five six games they've had a very good fixture list they played Rochdale uh, I think they've played Crawley I think they've played uh, Colchester um, and look, we haven't had that luck we've played pretty much all of the top teams apart from Gillingham today who we've actually lost to um, and look I just don't think anyone was at um, was at the top of the game I'm, I'm going on the uh, on the Blue Army podcast like I always am um, and I'm going to be asked to give a man of the match and I do not know who I would give it to this week it's going to be a very tough decision because I don't think anyone played particularly well <coughs> I mean, Barkley maybe, but he got booked, uh, you, you know, and and the, and the goal towards the end, I don't even think it's particularly anyone's individual fault, it's just when you invite pressure onto you for 20 minutes at the end of the game, they're going to create chances, if you sit back and just defend non-stop, they're going to have shots at you, and <coughs> look, we've been very good defensively this season, and I think the issues that we're in at the minute are all with goal scoring, I don't think the defence is much of a problem, like, we have sat back in the last few games, and for the most part, we've kept clean sheets. We haven't today because we tried to push our luck a bit. But the problems at the minute are at strike partnership. <coughs> Look, going to a front three for me isn't isn't the solution. I don't think, or whatever it was. I, some people argue, argue that Gordon was in the midfield, but I couldn't tell you where he was. He was sort of drifting all over the spot. Had a really dreadful game for us, Commander Gordon today. Patrick as well was non-existent. He got the ball most, and like James Phillips said on the radio. Um, Yes, it seemed like a lot of it was... Uh, he, he got a lot of stick. A lot of the... Uh, <coughs> when he got the ball, he didn't do anything with it and he, he, he made a bad pass or something like that. So he did a lot wrong. But he did something at least. Like, um, Gordon and... and um, oh, jeez. Um, Gordon and Garner. They didn't make as many mistakes as Patrick, but that's because they didn't have the ball nearly as much. At least Patrick was getting... He was receiving the ball. I wouldn't. I wouldn't play any of them next week. I think what needs to happen is we've got the one. He was the top goal scorer in the division before we decided to drop him for whatever reason. And at the time, I agreed with him being dropped because Garner was in brilliant form. He wasn't scoring the goals that Dennis had, but <coughs> some of his link out, uh, link up play, and some of the, you know, some of the dark arts that he's known for, he was getting away with a lot, and he was playing really well. But I think I'd like to see a front two of Edmondson and Garner because Edmondson. He wasn't brought on with enough time, I didn't think, but I think he has been one of our most effective forwards. I think I I really like Edmondson. He's brilliant um, with his head, and he's fast. People don't give him the credit for it, but he is a very fast player. Um, and yeah, <coughs> I'd like to see them two start next week, and I'd like to start with a proper midfield as well. Garner and Moxon on their own, they're both very very good players. They've shown that this season, but they're not good enough to start just them two. I don't think. Um, I think you've got to have that sort of more advanced midfielder in there, which has been McCallum and, or what I would go with next week is Jordan Gibson because we're so good at playing the ball around with our, uh, when it's on the floor. We've seen that. And when we had good moments today, which we did have, we had a few decent attacking moments. It was when we decided to play football and we played with the ball on the floor. And yet, we far too often, we'd lump it long to the forwards up top. And when you've got, at the time, you've got Patrick, he's not known for winning headers. Garner, he's, not, he's good at winning headers, but he's not the biggest man. If you're going to do that, have Edmondson on, and even with him on, I still wouldn't do it. I'd play it along the floor, because that's what the players are good at. You know, Gibson, get him on the pitch, he's really good at that. He's really good at the skillful part of it, playing with the ball on the floor. Moxon, <coughs> <coughs> he's shown this season how good he is and how effective he is. And then obviously Callum Guy, you know, he, he, most of his tackles are done when, when, when the ball's... Uh, played along the floor, um, yeah, but look, someone I want to mention as well is, um, next week's game against Leighton Orient is going to be massive, like, people will overreact to this game, I think, and, and to, a, to a sense, I think I have as well, it's a loss, we haven't lost in, what, six games before this, which is in- incredible when you look at where we were last season, and we've dropped <coughs> down at the playoffs, and the fact that dropping into fourth is as big of a shock as it is, just shows how good we've been this season, how good a job Paul Simpson's done, despite me questioning his decisions today. <coughs> but next week, not only do we play Leighton Orient, but Northampton play Stevenage. The top four are all playing each other next week, and it's a big opportunity, because no matter what happens in those games, if we beat Leighton Orient, we go back in to the automatic promotion places, we go back into that top three, and, and then, look, if we win 2-1 Leighton Orient next week, which is possible... <coughs> then I think this is completely forgotten about. It puts a lot of pressure on this late Orient game, which we probably shouldn't have done. I think if you get a win at Bradford, you get a win at uh, Gillingham today. 
then the Leighton Orient game is a bit of a free hit against what is ultimately a little bit of a better side. <coughs> but, look, at the end of the day, we are where we are for a reason, and I think we can still do it. I, I've still got all, so much confidence in this team. The years and years that I've been a Carlisle fan, I haven't seen a team that I like this much, or with a manager I like this much, so I'm, I'm so, so behind the team. Yes, it was poor today. But just think of all the good memories they've given us this season. And I've seen far too many people. And I know I know, Twitter doesn't represent the common opinion of a fan. I know people overreact on Twitter all the time. But I've seen far too many people turn on the players today. <coughs> um, and look, they've given us so many good memories this season. And back the manager, back the players. We go away to Leighton Orient next week. We go down to London. We, we can beat them. And if we do... We're right back in there and they've good feelings right back in the club. And I think that needs to be motivation for the players that that win is so, so important. That game is so, so important. And if we can go down there and get a win, it'll be so, so big for this season. Um, But yeah, not really much more to uh, to, to say from that. Um, Yeah, just um, look, this season's been great no matter what happens. But I'd like to finish in that top three as anybody would. Um, and Leighton Orient's a big chance to go back up into the top three. Look, as much as I'd love a doubt at Wembley, I think if you asked me now, would I rather win the playoffs or would I rather go up automatically? You obviously you'd win the playoffs just for the doubt at Wembley, but you go into that bottom four and you see it time and time again. The team that finishes fourth, they're not always the favourites. You see Northampton when they just missed out last season, which I hope they do again this season. <coughs> they just miss out and um, <laughs> and then they lose the playoff semi final. But yeah, it's a difficult one to take. Um, but for the most part, fans are still behind the players. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely still behind the manager. And I think we've still got the players to do it. We've still got the momentum to do it. Yes, we've lost this one game. But it's 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 not the end of the world against a very, very informed Gillingham team. Yes, I expected better. But every team has off games. So yeah. Uh, <coughs> I'll stop complaining now. Um... And you're probably sick of hearing me coughing. So, um, yeah. Thank you for watching the video. Please uh, please like the video if you feel that way inclined. And uh, subscribe to the channel in a bit.